all the creations by the Creator, humans alone represent a totally unique entity on Earth. He is not just an improved version of his ancestors, but also the product of a new concept, a product in which he alone is endowed with a sense of awareness that as a spark of the divine, his true nature is pure love. He is also endowed with an awareness of his conscience, the one that helps him to discriminate between right, wrong, moral and immoral. But despite the constant whisperings of his conscience, he chooses to ignore and sometimes even stifle his true nature. Contributing to the destruction and the slow and painful death of conscience and humanity, he moves on. Not with the rest of his own, not with a sense of oneness and belonging, but by himself, racing against his own and against time to hoard as much as possible for his own self. The world that has seen India as a fountainhead of spirituality is now seeing the country race with major global players vying for the top spot in the arena of global economy. Only in this race there is no finish line. Not wishing to lag behind, the country has quickened its pace to become one of the fastest and most competitive players in the race. Conforming to the current global and local economic trends, one more player to join in this corporate race is the hospital sector. Donning the face of a corporate entity has made them more marketable to their clients, the patients. They've got a lot of information about the hospital that's, that's readily available. Stem cell treatment, uh, we're looking at about five US. And uh, for us personally to travel from New Zealand to India is uh, about another 10,000 US, including travel and accommodation ranges from about $5,000 to about $7,000. For the financially strong, this comes as no surprise. In fact, the wealthy patients welcome this trend. While the wealthy either dig deeper into their pockets or fly overseas for specialized, expensive medical treatments, the commercialization that is sweeping the country has left the financially weak in the dust. With several mouths to feed, the desolate, in need of similar treatment, accepts his ailment as his karma and moves on. अब गवर्नमेंट असल जाते हैं वहाँ जाए तो इस टीम में बर्बर देखते नहीं सुइन दाल को खाली मात्र भी देते नहीं उन बेहद आते हैं सुइन दाल को प्लान्स टू चेंज द कर्मा ऑफ द पुअर एंड सॉल्यूशंस टू एंड देयर सफरिंग टुक शेप इयर्स अगो इन द हैंड्स ऑफ श्री सत्य साई बाबा Sri Satya Sai Baba was born on November 23, 1926 in a remote village called Puttaparthi, Anantapur district in rural Andhra Pradesh in southern India. He has come to be known as Baba or Swami or Bhagavan around the world. Millions of people are drawn to him and his message on universal love and service, love all, serve all.
Over the last several decades, Sri Satya Sai Baba's work has been on uniting humanity through love and service. He has demonstrated the virtues of compassion and selfless love for mankind and planted the seeds of service in his village where he grew up. The tiny village was deprived of schools, hospitals, and there was scarcity of water in the dry summer months, and the villagers had to travel a great distance for all these. As a first demonstration of his love, built a small school, a medical clinic, and dug a well in the village. The seeds of love germinated, blooming as several social welfare projects with each passing year, having one clear message to all of mankind. Service to man is service to God. November 23rd, 1990. It was Sri Satya Sai Baba's 65th birthday. The mood in Puttaparthi was that of jubilation. Thousands of people from India and abroad gathered there to celebrate his birthday had one more reason to rejoice. During his customary public discourse, Sri Satya Sai Baba spoke about the declining values and the commercialization of the medical profession and then made an unexpected declaration. With these noble and lofty ideals in view, we have started uh, one big Many people prayed that this hospital should be started in some city. There are so many hospitals working on this line. Whatever medical facilities and hospitals and schools are started anywhere, it is all a business proposition. Business, business and business. Kani, Uchitanga, Bidana Chuchi, Karunin Chai Twenty Vekti Kani Pinchatan Lid. But it is difficult to come across a person who melts looking at the poor and provides facilities. Kanaka Palani in the Ilanti Pavitraman to Yukon Chetini, Abilti Parchal and Japan Sankal Pinchikoni, Nuru Kota Vayam Cheta, Mana Prashantin Yumundu, Uka Vidaman Rajala and Sapin Chirani Pate Pincham. With a view to provide free medical facilities to all people and especially to the poor, in Prashantinilam, we have to... Higher learning we have to do, higher wajjim kudan we have to do. We have started 100 crore rupees worth of hospitals, we have laid foundation for that. Ye gunda jabu was te, koni lachalu vayam chesi, amerikaan kweditun tunnar. When people get problems of heart, they spend half of them to go to America. What about poor people? Who is there who can fit color If these poor people were to go to city, people do not care for them. Do not care for them. We Realizing these problems of the poor people, we want to have a big hospital here. We want to have a big hospital here. Bypass surgery, kaani, like a kidney marketing, kaani, Lungs operation chetan kani, brain operation chetan kani, anni uchitan kani. A year hence, a state-of-the-art tertiary care hospital was to be built by November 22, 1991 in Puttaparthi. In addition to the declaration, he also specified the time at which the first open-heart surgery would be performed at a super-specialty hospital. Sri Satya Sai Baba's declaration on November 22, 1990 Change the course of destiny in the lives of thousands of people. Inspired by Sri Satya Sai Baba's messages, this project drew several people from different walks of life to play different roles. Everyone with one common aspiration to be an instrument in this humanitarian mission of Sri Satya Sai Baba. One among these several instruments is Isaac. It's, uh, it's, it was an amazing journey from the Hard Rock Cafe to being involved in this marvelous hospital. That one day if this crazy little business ever was sold, uh, maybe we'd have some money that we could do something good. So to my amazement, the business just 
exploded around the world. Uh, we went public on the New York Stock Exchange and also on the London Exchange. And 20 years to the very day that I started it, uh, it was sold for $108 million, which of course is very auspicious just in the number alone. Uh, I came to my guru, Sri Satya Sai Baba, and said, I have this cash for you. And he said, Tigret, uh, I don't want just your cash, I want you too. Uh, you're going to be in charge of the entire project. You're going to oversee the construction. You're going to oversee the architectural planning. You're going to oversee the medical planning. And immediately sent me out on the road to uh, get all everything sort of arranged and put together. The first place I went was a World Health Organization, which is um, a wing of the United Nations, and met with the head of the World Health Organization and his... Uh, able-bodied crew there, and they were shocked and aghast. They said, this will never work. Uh, we've tried this model seven or eight times. It's always been a failure, and you'll never be able to keep it financed, uh, especially if you're talking about a free hospital, and especially one with high-end surgery, which this hospital was, was going to be. Um, and I spent about four or five days with them there, and they were, they were very negative, to say the least. Um, I then went back to see uh, such a Sai Baba and reported to him that uh, the chances of this hospital succeeding as far as the World Health Organization were concerned were limited and how many years it would take according to the largest builder of hospitals in the world. True to form, he said, Tiger, you've wasted eight weeks. We're now going to open in ten months. You should have been started already. Get out there and let's get going. There was no time to dwell on the negative comments blowing in. The dry, arid land that would house the super specialty hospital had to be readied at the declared time. Traditional ceremony, initializing the construction was performed, paving the right path to lay the foundation of human values for the medical profession to follow. The human instruments who would uphold the lofty pillars value-based health care as laid down by Sri Satya Sai Baba for his mission were being assembled. Suddenly I got a phone call in 1990 uh, that Bhagwan had organized an international uh, hospital committee and I was made the chairman of that. What Swami saw in me and what was the reason, I do not know, I still don't know, but that is what happened, you see. And then I became the chairman of the international committee and there were prominent doctors from abroad and prominent doctors from India, members in that committee. And we decided to set up a super specialty hospital under uh, Bhagwan's instructions, which were to establish a hospital where treatment of highest quality and the best medical technology would be given to everybody who deserved it and who came for it to the hospital without any distinction of caste, creed, color, country or religion. Now, the dry arid land was at the hands of Dr. Keith Critchlow, a world-renowned expert in spiritual architecture from Royal Institute of Architecture, London, England, and Larson & Tubro, the largest multidiscipline engineering and construction company in India. LNT, as they have come to be known, have handled several social projects of the Sri Satya Sai organization over the past several years. In fact, it took um, nearly three to four months to just to make the architectural drawings available. And we were hardly left with seven or eight months to complete the job in such a way that operations are performed, including installing the equipment. And that is a unique experience. We have never done that before. But um, with all Swami's guidance and the cooperation we got from the various agencies, it was entirely entrusted as a turnkey job and it was performed like a miracle. Even though it was done in a, uh, in a way with the engineering and technical people getting involved, we had many agencies because the cause is good. Everyone cooperated so well. Uh, the most difficult is uh, 
the engineering and construction and the supplies of various equipment has to be coordinated in such a way that it can be performed in a world record time. But more importantly, uh, the, the inside functioning of operation theatres and make them aseptic within a, such a short time as the construction was going on. What happened in the last one week is unbelievable. It's as though some miracle has happened. But it is that Seva Dal of Satisai Trust helped us to clean up everything and to provide such uh, a septic environment in the whole hospital that uh, nobody could believe that it has happened in such a short time. So those were the type of challenges. We mobilized a lot of people, uh, but all of them have to be coordinated because they are from different uh, areas of engineering. As Swami has shown an example how uh, poor people's health needs can be met with very easily if people who have got some money and, and they can come together with a pure uh, heart to serve people, how it can be done most economically. Many people in the country as well as outside wondered at how we could perform so fast at so low a cost. Nowhere in the, else in the world that would have happened. But at the same time, we have done this project at cost we have, not, uh, we have not incurred any loss or anything like that. We are also happy. The patients are happy. The doctors are happy. Uh, the whole community is happy because poor people who cannot afford such operations are getting free of cost such operations performed. Guided and inspired by Sri Satya Sai Baba, Professor Critchlow's drawings came to life. Just as Sri Satya Sai Baba had predicted a year ago, the once barren 